tonight on Police College, the final week of training. 63 men and women have invested the last five months of their lives hoping to become officers in the New Zealand Police Force. And now it's D-Day. They're going to find out whether all the blood, sweat and tears have been worth it, as they're about to be given the results of the final exam. Eighteen weeks ago, the recruits at Wing 223 were officially welcomed into police college. You're at work in this great place. They shared a common goal, to become fully-fledged police officers. It is a pass-fail course, and each and every one of you will probably struggle with different aspects of your training. The first couple of days, you'd ask me if I wanted to go home. <laughs> I would have just about walked home. It was just that hard. What followed was five months of intensive training in all aspects of the job. Each recruit was pushed to their absolute limit. Test after test after test, physically, mentally. They were exposed to the realities of frontline policing. Probably four to five weeks spent wondering, you know, what have I gotten myself into? The video we're going to have a look at graphically shows a number of violent deaths. And they were taught how to use the ultimate force. But let's not forget the endless study. Lack of sleep, definitely not used to studying for so many hours. Culminating in a gruelling three-hour exam. There were some horrifically long days leading up to the final exam. In the end, the success or failure of the recruits is closely watched by College Superintendent Ollie Beckett. It's really important people that we're preparing for the operational theatre have in fact attained the best standards possible. And that means passing the final exam. OK, thank you everyone. Go have a seat, thanks. The results of which are about to be announced by Inspector Craig Cameron. 19 weeks of hard work and hard graft has come to an end for now. But have all of the recruits managed to pass? There was an element of confidence, but I don't think you ever want to play it up too much until you've actually finally got the results. That doubt, that self-doubt, whether you actually passed or not. You're sort of torn between wanting to do your best and just wanting to get the past. The whole 19 weeks was riding on that day. Ah, uh, you've all passed, so we can relax. Yeah! just remember crying and grabbing the first person next to me and then going through the whole section and hugging the whole lot of them. Just going around congratulating other people and then it sort of struck me that I'd passed as well. It was a lot better finding out, I think, that everyone had passed. That was pretty special too. It was great to have the, the whole family in there together, you know, so it was good. I, I take it you're pretty happy about that thing. Happy is something of an understatement. The recruits of Wing 223 are nothing short of ecstatic. And that's a feeling soon assisted by a few celebratory drinks. Well, this is what they said, but you haven't got rid of that word yet. No. Still says recurring. For Indian-born Sushan Naya, today not only reflects well on him, it brings honour to his entire family. All the Indian community looks towards you and goes, well, he's a cop. Everyone has with me. Having passed with flying colours, he credits some of his success to being surrounded by overachievers. 60 odd people for like five months, and I've picked up so many things from different people, and yep, I've changed. And it's not surprising that after five months of living in each other's pockets, Wing 223 also seems like a family. You get pretty close, you know, you're, you're knocking on each other's doors every day, um, you know, you're eating together, you're studying together. Even so, policing wasn't Sean Muir's first calling. I've been the regular butcher, baker, candlestick maker, I guess. I've worked in banks, I've done a bit of plumbing, a bit of building. I've got a job coaching an American rugby team, and now I'm here. And this evening, Sean's revealing yet another talent. Tonight is the last chance for the recruits to let their hair down. And after a few glasses of Dutch courage, the karaoke begins. 
While singing may not be an appropriate career path, at least they can always fall back on the police force. It's the morning after the night before, and the recruits start the day with a reality check. How many times have you been told, on time is late? So if you were the ones who strolled in thinking, oh, I think I'll go to class now, you better change your ways over the next week, because it won't stack up with your mates on the street. And some advice is a little late in coming. Good luck, you are prepared. And remember, keep those celebrations in balance. You are constables now. Words which Bianca Johnson thought she might never hear. I've got two children at home with my husband who was left at home with them. And my youngest just got special needs, so it was sort of this tug of, I should be at home being a good mother, and no, you shouldn't. You should be at police college doing what you want to do. Having made the decision to follow her dream, soon Bianca and her fellow graduates will be reporting for active duty, which means they can finally lose those recruit badges. This is what it's about. Though there's still a few days of training left to complete, including some much needed marching practice for the graduation parade. Quick march, left, right, left, right. Which seems to take precedence no matter what the actual class. Right, left, right, left. Left, 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 right, left. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Left, right, left, right. At this stage, from what we've just seen, the parade is looking pretty good. Part of the parade is not. And that means even more practice. All right, guys, let's go. Coming up, the graduates prepare for their big day, but some are out of time in more ways than one.